Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Thursday, March 7th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we're here in the studio with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have a very nice guest today, we don't do. we? From, from a, one of our favorite new we plays. We love on this Broadway. play. Jonathan Burke is here from Choir Boy. Ooh. Last chance to Final see Choir week. Boy. Last what? chance. Wait, before we go any further. Oh, yes. Can I just say today is the first day of your 20th year at Broadway.com? Why do you have to out me? Happy look, anniversary. look, people, I'm only 23. 20th year. 20th smash year, Beth Stevens. And Paul on tour. I know. But yeah, okay. It's your moment. <laughs> um, we will get to all of that, probably not that, but other <laughs> things <laughs> after our top five. These guys have magic to do, kind of. Oh, cute. Thanks. So <laughs> the play that goes wrong is a big hit. It was a yes. big hit in London, on Broadway, and now it's off Broadway, right? And that show, which is about a play going wrong, um, Good description. It's created Paul. by the Mischief Theater, and they have other, they've created other shows. They yes, have like they a have Peter the Pan show. Bank robbery mm -hmm. gone wrong. They have a Christmas Peter Carol Pan show. goes wrong. They, mm -hmm. sort of been Things a brand. go wrong with them. Yes. Right. It's they go bar. wrong. But now it's like a big Broadway brand, and now there's a fancy new. Uh, this is going to be like a show we're going to hear about for a while. I think a new addition to the Wrong Family. Yes. It yes. is called Magic Goes Wrong, mm -hmm. and and they have teamed up with Penn and Teller, who are kind of like. Guys that know about magic and know about theater and, and know comedy. about creating and comedy, correct. Um, so this is going to be really fun. It is. It, it will play London's Vaudeville Theater. It's described as an evening of grand illusion featuring the Mischief Company playing a hapless gang of magicians presenting a charity event. Mm. Um, now, this is why I think it's interesting. I think they set the Vaudeville on fire or something. It sounds so, yeah, <laughs> something <brilliant>. bad's <laughs> going to happen. Um, Kevin McCollum, Broadway's Kevin McCollum, and J.J. Abrams. Star Wars is J.J. Abrams. Who produced they the produced play? The, yeah, on Broadway, the yes. play that goes wrong. And they are, in, they are now on the producing team of this new one, which is why I think we're going to be hearing a lot about this show. This will start previews in December, December 14th, 2019, and opening is set for January. This is really far off, Beth. January so 8th, work out the 2020. Kinks. Wow. So you can go see this show in nine and a half months. <laughs> Casting to be announced because... <laughs> It won't start rehearsals till right. like October. They, they gotta so it anyway, up. it's very exciting, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm into it. The neighborhood is staying open for a little bit longer. We're talking about Avenue Q. Don't is that a neighborhood? I guess it is. It's, it's not really. An, it's um. It's a street. It's found its purpose. It's staying open. They they announced they're closing. So let's give it. Let's let's give the uh, mm -hmm. trajectory of Avenue Q. It started at the Vineyard Theater off Broadway. It moved to Broadway. It won the Tony Award. Puppet sex. Okay, that's you can part. be as loud as be you wicked. want. That's not part of the trajectory. When you're making love, remember Thank that? You. Yeah, nope. we remember. Internet is for porn. Yep. Won the Tony, beat the Wicked, then <laughs> played a long time on the Broadway, and then moved off Broadway right. to New World Stages. Then right. it announced its closing. It was going to close on April 28th. Tears. No. Now it's closing on May 26th. Huh. And you know what the press release said? Like, like, forget your Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yeah, Schaden, that's a song. They like to make that's that a song. German. That's a song. <gasps> so is, you can be as loud as you want. Yep. For another month. <laughs> now, whatever happened to the movie? I don't know. I remember, like, we were writing about a movie, like, 10 years ago. <laughs> anyway. Every, we, everything wants to be a movie. We'll see. We'll see. It could be good. And this benefit concert just added another familiar face. Uh, Not a yeah, concert. so this is a number. <laughs> number. It's a play. It's Carol Churchill. It's, like it's very <laughs> prestigious. Okay, if you say uh, so. It's very highbrow for Broadway.com. No, Daniel <laughs> Craig is doing it, and now we found that um, Atu Blankson Wood, who was He's recently fantastic in Slave Play mm -hmm. yes. at New York Theatre Workshop, will be in it with Daniel Craig. So this is a one night benefit performance on March 10th, mm -hmm. which is like. Sunday. I, I'm You're welcome. Watch on. Oh, okay, great. Sunday. At 7 o'clock. Did we, did we just find out he's doing it? Yeah, yes, we did. And Daniel Craig was in the original yes, A number at was. Royal Court Theater, and he played the part that Atu will play in this benefit. Oh, you should be doing this news story, Beth. Well, um, it's a story of a son who confronts his father with the startling knowledge that he is genetically identical counterparts. And Sam Gold will be directing, and this is going to be great, and it's going to raise a lot of money for New York Theater Workshop. Good. They can develop more new work. And full casting has been announced for this upcoming musical. 
Okay, we keep talking about this show. Let me tell you about Marie, comma, Dancing Still. I just found out that was the title. Marie, Dancing, dancing still, still. Which is very deep. Not still dancing. Not still dancing. dancing still. We're going to get this wrong for at least the amount of time it takes to come to Broadway. This is Aaron Sinclarity, who like we Caroline love. It's Change. What are the other titles with, with strange, a lot, like, With a lot of punctuation. <laughs> Tony Kushner <laughs> loves to have a punctuation situation. We knew that this stars Tyler Peck and Terrence Mann and Karen Ziemba and Dee Hody. Yeah. We knew that. Yep. And now the ensemble has been announced. Sarah Esty, Tyler Hardwick and Lyrica Woodruff and many more. And we just featured Lyrica Woodruff in our um, Gotta Dance. That's right. Our rebooted video rebooted. series that we're doing that Kyle is actually directing. Kyle behind the board. He's nodding heavily. Hi, Kyle. Want to come over on this side? Okay. Kyle, this Kyle will play Gaspel Seattle's Fifth Avenue Theater directing from March. Those videos. I'm They're keep fantastic. Talking. I'm keep going. Okay. I want to go to Seattle, Beth. <laughs> okay. Well, you have from March 22nd through April 14th. Well, what does the title mean? Well, because it's about a statue. Marie, no, the dancing still. It's a statue of somebody dancing. So she's still dancing and she's still. <gasps> It's about and Edgar. It's still, oh, it's deep. It's, deep. it's about it's Edgar deep. Degas, played by Terrence Mann, the famous sculptor and painter. But how will the title look on a T-shirt? Marie, <laughs> comma, dancing still. Um, they might change it again. A new musical. Um, and this is a Stroman super special one. So good. we'll see. And this fan favorite musical is getting new life for one night only. Sweet charity, because we like musicals about working girls. Okay. As a community, <laughs> we I We like think, big spenders. I mean, Sweet Charity. So, uh, Transport Sweet. Group, This is the new group did it a couple years ago with... Uh, Sutton Foster. Bob. Remember that? Uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Not that old. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, Transport Group is now doing a concert. Jack Cummings III, who is the guy who runs Transport Group, very yep. talented director, who is also hard at work on Benny and June, uh, yes. directing the musical at Paper Mill, which is in rehearsals right now. Um, but he's going to take time out to direct a one-night concert uh, at Merkin Conc Concert Hall on oh June 17th. You don't have to think about it yet. Post Tony's. After Benny and June. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is the Neil Simon, Cy Coleman, Dorothy Fields show about a down-on-her-luck dance hall hostess. Hostess. Uh, who meets a nerdy guy? You and didn't they say fall her name, love, Charity Hope cute. Valentine. She's so they're going to do it with names. a big twenty-three a piece name. orchestra, Ooh. and I can't wait to see who's in it because there's really fun roles. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, before we kick before you out I of here, out, yeah. before we get you out of here, uh -huh. I want to tell you what else is on the site. We have our first installment, our first episode of Gideon Glick's backstage vlog at To Kill a Mockingbird. It's called What's the Dill? Cute. Because he plays Dill Cute. in the play. It's, and he interviews his co-star, Celia keenan Bolger. He asks Naturally. her, what's the dill with you playing a kid, basically. Celia has been doing great Insta stories. Celia is fantastic. Strong and so is Gideon Glick, and he's a delight on Twitter. Also, mm -hmm. we have photos of Adam Driver, Carrie he Russell. She might be stronger on Twitter, and she might be stronger on Instagram. Check it out. Let us know. <laughs> Thought we have know. photos of the cast of Burn This, Adam Driver, Carrie Russell, Brandon Uranowitz, and David Furr as they are in rehearsal. Yep. And that's that. i got to get out because you have to do your first interview I of your do. 20th year at Broadway.com. You have to yes. stop it. I, I don't like you, and I, <laughs> I just want you to leave. Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest? Gladly. Yes, you have Jonathan Burke here in the studio with us today because he's currently starring in Choir Boy on the Broadway. Uh, he's previously traveled across the country in the national tours of Mary Poppins, A Christmas Story, and Joseph, and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. He's done a whole lot. And guess what? He's booked and blessed because he's set to appear in the upcoming off-Broadway play, Tony Stone. We'll talk all about that, too. Make sure to follow him on Instagram at JohnDB with three E's, not two, not one, but three. So follow him and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Jonathan and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. First of all, you look fantastic. Thank you. You just look amazing. Thank also, you. I want to point out, tomorrow's your birthday. <gasps> so happy early Stop. birthday. Thank yes. you so Thank much. Thank you for celebrating early with us here. Absolutely. How's it going over at Choir Boy? <sighs> one of my favorite plays. Mm -hmm. Amazing, so amazing. It's been a dream. It's been going great. Audiences have been loving it. We've been having a great time. So you stepped into the role of Ferris when uh, Jeremy Pope stepped out of the role to go do Ain't Too Proud. Tell me how that transition was for you. Oh, it was really a dream come true. I mean, Jeremy was so wonderful in the role and watching him and learning from him in the role and Trip Coleman, our director, um, working with him and finding out ways to make the role my own now mm -hmm. has been so much fun each night and just finding new things and um, exploring what this character really means to me individually has been great. So it's been truly fantastic dream. How do you relate to the character? 
Well, growing up as a gay black man in America, I relate strongly because the character is about <laughs> literally it a It deals young with all black, of those things very deeply. Yeah, a gay boy um, at a private school, um, mm-hmm. finding himself, finding what it means to be a man, finding what it means to be gay, mm-hmm. and how do you express yourself in a place that doesn't always accept that. So I relate very strongly to it. So that's why I'm glad to share the story because it's not a story that's often told, you know? And I think that it's an important one. It's told with so much heart. Thank you. I love it. So I want to know a little bit about your origin story. Tell me where you're from and how you started your career. Okay, I am from Baltimore, Maryland. (gasps) Yes! Sorry, so am I. Baltimore, too! Yes! I don't hear any Baltimore accents, but we'll get to that. I got rid of that. We get we get rid of it. Yeah, I went to the Baltimore School for the Arts, so I got rid of it (laughs) (laughs) for high school. Um, But I actually started uh, at Cardinal Sheen School, middle school, and my teacher from there actually came to see Choir Boy, Mia Ferris. She came last weekend, and and it's so much about students and teachers. Yes, yes. So to have her there as the person who inspired me to be an actor was unreal. Oh, I'm uh, getting goosebumps. Yeah, I remember the very moment, sixth grade, we did a Motown musical that she had created. Oh, and I sang she's Stevie very Wonder. Yeah, oh, you she sang is. Stevie Wonder? And that's got to be the best part. I did, I did. Um, My Sharia Moore, and I remember it like it was yesterday. The reaction of the audience just fueled me. I couldn't believe how responsive they were, standing ovation, screaming. I was like, I could do this. I could do this. <laughs> I could yeah. do this. So from there on, I went to the Baltimore School for the Arts, where I went majored in acting there, and then I went to Ithaca College, mm-hmm. where I got a BFA in musical theater. And after that, I've been working ever since. Were you always a singer growing up? Yeah, I actually I sang in church choirs, mm-hmm. which is also a lot of what choir. Right, there's is a about. lot of that kind of music. Yeah, of well, course. it's about an a cappella singing choir that sings spirituals in this school. So I grew up singing a lot of the music that we sing in the show. Um, in choirs at church and outside of church. So I started singing when I was little, but I didn't... You're a real-life choir boy. I'm a real-life choir boy. It's <laughs> true. That's what I mean. It's my story. That's amazing. It is. So you've been a part of this play for a while. What drew you to it? What What did you feel like it was saying, not just to you who really identifies with it, but to wider audiences? Well, first of all, the playwright, Terrell, Terrell Alvin, Alvin McCraney. McCraney, who's a genius. Genius, actually, MacArthur genius. Yeah, like more. certified genius. <laughs> like it's not just our opinion. Yeah, it's like got a stamp on it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so his work in itself has always been an inspiration to me. So that alone was one thing to draw me. But then the story of a group of black boys sharing different experiences of being a black boy in America really just and meant all in a very wide spectrum of sort of masculinity, exactly. sexual identification, just so much. Absolutely. So those uh, topics just, I think, are very important and ones that haven't really been expressed on a Broadway stage. Yeah, that's so true. So to mm-hmm. be able to show that in a true, authentic, real way, um, I was sold from the jump. Yeah. 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 So now your step forward, I feel like you really did because Ferris is like at the the, the center of the triangle, right? So mm-hmm. you step forward. Does it feel different to have the ensemble behind you like that? It does. It feels <laughs> great. I, I actually also am the dance captain, <laughs> oddly enough. So I was... And there's some <laughs> the, moves. The, the, yeah, there's mm. some moves. Camille A. Brown's choreography is amazing. So she's, she's stunning. Um, and so I was. I had a certain position of leadership, you know, within the group. But mm-hmm. it's interesting because Ferris the character that I'm now playing is the leader of the choir. So it kind of juxtaposed with my real life position as a dance captain and now the Leading acting. Leading company. Exactly. Um, it just feels great. They're so supportive. Everyone was so welcoming and just willing to accept what I brought to the role and play with me and have a good time. Mm. So it feels great. They're now amazing. I didn't ask you, what did your teacher say to you after seeing it? Oh, she cried. Well, we all cried. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, it was one of those. It's, it's very a little, emotional piece. Yeah, tearjerker. Uh, but it's funny, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you laugh? that's true. Oh, of course I laughed. Okay, good. There's, there's I felt all my feelings. Good. All <laughs> the feels. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she just was t- telling me how proud she was and just thankful for the way that I continue to appreciate her and, you know, spread the joy that she found in me. She inspired in me, I should say, um, to everyone. And she just was so 
so proud. That's awesome. All right, we're going to get to your questions, but first we have to talk about Tony Stone. You already have your next gig. How great does that feel? Amazing. Tell me about the play. (laughs) Coming up, coming up. Coming up. Next play is Tony Stone by Lydia Diamond. It's her new play um, commissioned by Roundabout. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it at the Laura Pell's, and Pam McKinnon is directing, and it is starring April Mathis as Tony Stone, who is a real-life person. So it's about one of the first females to play baseball professionally in the Negro League. Yeah. So it follows her journey in joining this team of players. So I play one of her teammates. So it's eight men and one woman in the cast. And it's going to be fantastic. You're going from the choir to the team. The choir to the team. There's no singing in this one, though. No singing. But there is movement. Is there there a uniform? I'm not sure about the the uniform yet. But I know there's movement also by Camille A. Brown. So oh, you can expect to just move on around with Camille Brown. Exactly. So um, have you played baseball in real life? You know what? I did. You when did. I was little, I did. I started at T-ball. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, advanced to baseball up until about the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> you peaked early, yeah, Jonathan. Peaked early. I was a pitcher, though. Oh, well, there you go. That's important. And I was striking people out left and right. You I had was a good arm. Very, yeah, I had a strong But then arm. you had to retire it and concentrate on your career. Literally. <laughs> I actually was like, I can't do this anymore. I want to act. And so that's, that's what I did. That's pretty big for like a nine-year-old or yeah. eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. We're going to take your questions. You I know you have a lot. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so Alexandra wants to know that, do you have any other creative outlets to relax or help you through like long two-show days or something like that? Oh, I work out a lot. Mm. That's like my We thing. know. People, have you seen his Instagram? Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> we know that. He has like, it's not a six pack. It's like a 24 pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two hands. <laughs> yes. So between shows, I always go to the gym. That kind of gives me focus. It gives me release. It gives me, it actually energizes me. <laughs> Oddly enough, people are like, how can you work yeah, out in between out. shows? It doesn't tire me out. It actually re-energizes me in a way. So that's one of the main things that I do. Um, to kind of focus myself and love that. Have fun. Yeah. Cool. So Valentin wants to know, just wants you to talk about the importance of having LGBTQ plus friendly plot lines on Broadway in this day and age and speak on what it's like to be starring in one right now. Oh my goodness. Um, I think that it's so important to have these stories being told in an authentic way. Mm -hmm. And I think especially a story that is about person of color that's LGBT. Mm -hmm. You don't often see that one. Um, So I feel a strong responsibility to represent what it means to be that as I am in real life as well. So in representing the character, I get to actually express my own pride through it. Mm -hmm. And so I think the representation matters so strong right now. And I'm so glad that this is being told. Has that come back at you from fans? Oh my gosh. Every day, every day day there's another person that says thank you Mm. for reflecting me on the stage i've never seen a reflection of myself so honestly and clearly on a stage it's very authentic i mean terrell really dug deep with this yeah Uh, well he you know he lived portions of this as well Mm -hmm. you know himself so he comes from a really honest place so hearing that from fans alone makes it worth it every day that's Mm. amazing I love that. So Alec wants to know if you have any other dream roles, whether it be a musical or yeah, a Yeah, let's play. put it out there. Oh, let's put it out. We know you're booked and blessed universe. for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have to be a little later in the year, but that's okay. Okay, let's see. Um, I mean, I would love to play the leading player in Pippin once. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're just I'm nodding. Like, <laughs> yeah, you I, could do that. I would love, I mean, sure, Hamilton would be fun. Do something in there. That all seems plausible. Um, seems plausible. Mm-hmm. I, I love uh, originating work, so mm-hmm. something new s- will come my way that will be fresh and exciting. I know it. Um, so we'll see. Well, let me just twist on that um, question. Do you have a person you'd like to work with? Oh, Do you have a dream goodness. co-star or playwright yes. or director? Yes, Audra McDonald. If you're watching, she's watching. Audra. Hi, Audra. You are. Um, I've always said that I will play opposite Audra one day. I know it in my heart. I believe it. <laughs> And I believe Oprah will produce it. I, I, I believe that I'm going to work with Oprah and Audra Done McDonald. and done. If you say it on this show, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Absolutely. you know that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's true. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Yeah, last question. So Nathan would like, without giving any spoilers away, how do you feel when you, what emotions are you feeling during that last moment in Choir Boy? Oh, 
that's a heavily discussed moment, the last <laughs> moment. It um, is. Yeah, I don't want to give it away too much, but uh, I'm feeling <laughs> the fact that life continues and there's not a period to anything. I have to continue forward through whatever journey it is and whatever obstacles may come. They don't stop. It's a continuation of learning, growing. What am I going to do next? How do I move forward? How do I try to overcome mm -hmm. these major obstacles that will continue to come at me? That's beautiful. beautiful. All right. You guys only have a few more days, few more days left. I'm yeah. just putting of the word. A few more days left to see Choir Boy. It closes on March 10th. What are you doing for your birthday tomorrow besides doing the show? <laughs> yes, doing a show. All of my siblings and my first cousins are all coming to town. How they many all people live out will of this state. group be? It will be about 16 people. Yes. So we're, you they're have a cheering to the section show. for oh, you. Oh, yes, yes. And then, I hope um, you bring confetti and balloons. <laughs> <laughs> they better bring something, signs. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to go to a nice dinner after because we have two shows the next day, so yeah, I can't do too much. Keep but it real there. Yeah. Well, happy birthday Thank and you. congratulations. You guys, go see Choir Boy while you can and then go see Tony Stone That's at right. the Laura Pell Theater. Thank you for coming in, Jonathan. Thank you so much for having me. Caitlin, will you take us on out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Noah J. Ricketts of Frozen.